Hey everybody, I uh, hope that you're doing well. I was uh, enjoying a little bit of cool weather, but I am recording this on Sunday afternoon and it's hot and windy and dry and um, yeah, so I'm just ready to be done with this. I uh, hope everything is, is good on your end. Good news, this is week six, so uh, you just have three weeks left. I know that it is a lot of work. Uh, and if you remember back five weeks ago, I forewarned you that it's a lot of work. Um, whenever you take one of these compacted classes, uh, it, it gets to be a challenge. Just think that in the summer, I actually teach a four week version of this class. So imagine that, uh, that is a, a ton. Um, so a few things, um, this week you have two chapter, uh, two chapter, two chapter modules. Uh, I will say I'm still getting people that I'm convinced are not using the book at all and it's impacting your grades. So it's important that you're reading the book, just like I said way back when, even in the email before the class started. Um, I know that we're near the end. I know you're probably not going to do anything about it now if you haven't already, but um, it is definitely impacting things. Um, so last couple of weeks were, were, uh, were steep in the workload. You had uh, three modules each week, plus you had a t uh, your test two. So that's a lot. Now, these last batches of three, so we went three weeks with test one, two weeks with test two. Now we got three weeks again to, for test uh, three, which was kind of your final if you want to think about it that way. Um, and it's going to be two modules this week, so that's good. And one of them is a bit lighter in content. Then you're going to have three modules, uh, and then your last week you'll have two. The design for the two modules this week is because your concert report is also due at the end of the week. So please make sure that you read the instructions for the concert report. Uh, I want the concert to be at least 45 minutes long. One concert, uh, one artist. If there's opening bands, I don't, I don't, you know, you can include a little bit of information about it, but I don't want a whole lot. Um, it is to be an online concert. And there is a YouTube link that I give you that takes you to a whole bunch of concerts. You don't have to choose from that list. Uh, that's just a starting point. Um, you're welcome to find something else on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever. If there is any question as to whether it counts or not, please reach out to me before you do it. So if I were you, I would start thinking about that right away. Hopefully you are uh, watching this on Monday uh, because this is Thanksgiving week. So hopefully you have great plans, and uh, but we still got the work to do. We still got school. I do want to say at the outset, I'm grateful for all of you. Uh, I'm grateful be, to be able to to teach and, and to teach something that I love and I'm passionate about. And uh, hopefully you're, you're learning a lot in that. And I just put this out there because I want you to be able to plan your week ahead. I've, I've said this before, but really one of the most uh, important ingredients to a successful career is good time management. And so uh, I had a couple of people reaching out to me saying uh, this last week saying, um, I missed the welcome video. Can you open it? And I didn't because I had already told everybody, hey, that's it. You know, uh, we're, we're cranking through here. So hopefully you're watching this on Monday or Tuesday. You're going to work through your modules. You're going to get those open. You're going to think about the assignments. You're going to be thinking about that concert report. Start making those plans. Note that there is a, a 250 word minimum. I'm uh, sorry, 1250 word minimum on that concert report. Uh, 250 word on the reflection observation, and some of you are not hitting that. So make sure that you're spending the time doing it. Uh, if it were me doing this class, I'd be watching this thing right away. I'd be trying to get to the work to, to just carve off Thursday, uh, you know, for Thanksgiving. Now, if you don't have plans or you don't have anything going on, then take advantage of that time as well. However, whatever works for you, um, I'm just saying manage that time well. So uh, this week coming up, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. We have two modules and they're very, very different. So the first one is on what we call progressive rock. So you think about, we learned about country rock and that's where you have uh, country influences into rock. You learned folk rock where that's folk influences into rock, uh, jazz rock, jazz influences into rock. Um, and you've learned about hard rock and heavy metal and progressive rock, uh, which is sometimes called art rock, um, is, uh, you'll hear it referred to as prog sometimes, which is just short for progressive, is where you have classical influences into, um, uh, classical influences into, um, 
if I, if you just saw me do something weird on the video, it's because apparently I'm low on my battery, so I had to hit something on there. Uh, we have classical influences into rock, and um, that manifests itself in, in a number of ways. Now, in the man, uh, in the modules online, I'm very clear in spelling this out for you, just like I do. It's spelled out in the book, so you're gonna have classical rock that's influenced by by orchestral instruments. Now that doesn't mean string sections like you have in Stand By Me or something like that. It means using uh, an, an orchestra in that. We've heard bits of that with the Beatles, but the Be Beatles kind of predated this. Um, great example is uh, Nights in White Satin by the Moody Blues. So you'll learn about that. And I really suggest that you listen all the way through to that song, specifically the last couple of minutes, because you'll hear what they're doing there. Then you have progressive rock that is influenced by classical forms. So in most rock and pop music, you have a few basic forms. And in fact, modern pop, it's even gotten more simpler. It's usually just like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Uh, very repetitive, uh, very redundant. Um, going back a little bit of ways, you would have bridge sections in there, uh, and, and bridge sections would add a little bit more depth uh, and interest to the songs. Um, but you can also uh, add other forms to it, and so some of these uh, musicians were classically trained. They they knew how to read music. Now, remember, I've said in the past that maybe 95% of, of pop musicians don't know how to read or write music at all. And that's fine. It's not required for this. But in this case, you get a lot of them that do. And you get a lot of keyboards and synthesizers. So you'll hear a lot more of that in the music. Um, and so because they're classically trained, their, their uh, breadth of experience is wider. And they can go back and look at uh, examples of music in the classical era and Baroque era and Renaissance and all of that, and then bring those forms into it. So you're going to learn about that. And you're uh, going to have to be thinking about, okay, which bands really exemplify this? So make sure that you're going through the materials. The modules, I give you a lot of videos so you can see what they look like and sound like. And there is some in, uh, information in there, but I really want you to go through it. And that being said, I know some of you are just trying to do these assignments by copying and pasting the introductions or taken straight out of the introductions. Take the time to, to learn, to go deeper into the material. Um, and then you're going to learn about uh, bands using avant-garde trends. Avant-garde is a French term. It's originally a military term, and it means the advanced guard. Uh, if you're in the military, you, that's not where you want to be, right? You're on the front lines. You're going out first. In, in the arts, though, uh, that means the people that are pushing the envelope. And, and in fact, in the marketing world and all of that, uh, and, and web and all of that, you sometimes hear the term bleeding edge. But cutting edge is those people that are, that are, they're exploring new boundaries. Um, they're pushing the envelope. And so a great example of that would be Pink Floyd. And when you go through the materials, you'll understand why. Uh, and they certainly were, were influenced and in coming about at the same time as the Beatles, but very much influenced in bringing other types of sounds. You're going to listen to Poem Electronique. Um, by Edgar Varese that was very influential to a lot of bands at the time. Now, that piece came out in the 1950s, and some of you are going to listen to it and go, what the heck am I listening to? I don't even know that this is music. That's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother day. So you can, uh, you'll, you'll check that all out. And, um, you know, more modern examples of that would be maybe Radiohead and, and, and people like that, even though they've been around for quite a while as well. And then you're going to learn about glitter rock, which is sometimes uh, referred to as glam rock, and that's a very different thing. So don't, glitter is not progressive, they're just in the same chapter. So if you have an assignment that's asking about progressive rock, don't include information on glitter rock. Glitter rock or glam rock is uh, this this uh, uh, fragment of rock music that uh, often has theatrics to it, as does some progressive rock, but it's very theatrical. Uh, it, it's uh, often talking about the kind of underbelly of life or inner city. It's also very fascinated with outer space. So you're going to get, uh, you know, whether you got Elton John's Rocket Man or David Bowie's uh, Space Oddity, or uh, you'll get that. And then you'll also get, um, you know, people like Lou Reed that are talking about uh, the, 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 the gritty side of, of life and, and the seedier sides, if you will. Uh, and so you're going to learn about, about that. And in there you have, uh, you know, two great examples, which of course are, uh, David Bowie and then Queen. And Queen to me is one of the few bands, um, that I would say maybe the only other band that I would say kind of, um, 
uh, follows in the footsteps of the Beatles, let's put it that way. Uh, as I've said in the past, there's really no more influential band than the, the Beatles. Uh, if it wasn't for the Beatles, anybody that came after them wouldn't be doing what they did. The fact that Beatles, the Beatles wrote their own songs, recorded their own songs, and then performed their own songs was, was revolutionary for the time. So any band that you look at, whether it's Led Zeppelin or Queen or whomever, uh, you know, they, they owe that to, uh, in fact, I was just watching this amazing uh, interview with, if any of you are into music and you know who Rick Beato is, if you don't, look him up, but he just published an interview with Sting and Sting said, hey, we owe everything to the Beatles. You know, it, it's because of what the Beatles did that all the bands that followed were able to do what they did. Uh, so Queen certainly was one of that and probably uh, uh, one of the most after the Beatles in terms of diversity of, of song styles and sounds and, and all of that. You go back to uh, Day at the Races and Night at the Opera and, and, and what they're doing is, is pretty amazing. So you're gonna learn about that. And then we're gonna change gears totally and we are going to uh, leave the US. We've been to England. Um, you have learned about hard rock and heavy metal and how that started to go global, but you're gonna learn about ska and reggae. And uh, some people think that ska came after reggae and it's reggae combined with punk. It's not, ska came first. Uh, the thing about ska and reggae is that they both came out of the island of Jamaica. They were influenced by the, the music that, that got there by way of the slave trade uh, from from West Africa across to Brazil and then up through the Caribbean and then eventually uh, as it passed through there made its way here to the States. Um, and then also, uh, remember I talked about AM radio and, and, and so FM radio uh, really comes about uh, in the, and I think I've talked some about this already, uh, in the late 60s and, um, but ska and that precedes FM radio and everything. And remember the AM radio could travel long distances, especially at night. So musicians that were in Cuba, musicians that were in Jamaica, uh, could hear radio that was being broadcast from the South, from New Orleans, from uh, Florida, from other places. And so they were hearing rhythm and blues that was coming out of the United States. And so you have this they had this uh, their own kind of indigenous style known, known as mento and and you know things are always evolving and changing right uh, again nothing exists in a vacuum and they were hearing all of these combinations of sounds and it eventually ev evolved into ska and then ska went through rock steady to become reggae which is uh, uh a kind of slowed down it also has religious uh uh, connotations to it with Rastafari, uh, Rastafarianism. You'll learn about Haile Selassie, Marcus Garvey, uh, Ethiopia, the connections there. So, so read this stuff and, and take it, take it in. Um, and then you're going to learn about the second wave of ska, which was related to two tone that uh, happened in, in England. And there's a big expatriate uh, Jamaican population in England. And that's why uh, uh, ska became very popular, uh, not just in Jamaica, but over in England, then eventually here. In fact, one of the ver first big ska hits was a Jamaican artist named Millie Small, who covered a song called My Girl Lollipop, which was an American R&B song. And she did a, a ska version of it called My Boy Lo Lollipop, and you hear a lot of the the aspects of what makes ska ska sonically, uh, and then ska and reggae have their own differences. You're going to learn about that in the materials as well. Um, and then so then you'll learn about two tone ska, which is the second wave of ska that came about in the late '70s. This is really when I personally became uh, aware of it and really fell in love with this style. When I started to, I was in high school, and that's when the specials and madness and the English beat. Uh, on all those bands started to come out and then they started to influence folks over here like uh, Oingo Boingo and, and other folks. Um, there was a, a band here in, in California called The Untouchables. And so then, then out of that, and that's really where we're going to end with this, you're going to learn about the reggae influences uh, and ska influences on bands like The Clash and The Police, uh, which will, will uh, lead into punk, uh, which will be coming up uh, the week after. And... Um, uh, and then we don't get to the the third wave of ska, which really has kind of continued with bands like uh, No Doubt and Real Big Fish and a bunch of others. But ska has kind of stayed popular um, and it's influenced a bunch of other styles as well. But its its origins 
uh, go back into the late 50s and, and early 60s. So that is it. Uh, I tried to make this a little quicker than usual. Um, so uh, be thinking about that concert report, be going through the materials, doing the work that you need to do. Do good work. The end is almost here and those points are going to count. And it's not uncommon for students to reach out to me, you know, in the last week or two and saying, hey, are we going to have any extra credit opportunities? Do all the good work now and uh, then you won't need the extra credit opportunities. So again, uh, during this holiday week, it is a time to think about the things that we are grateful for. And I know that in the last year and a half with the pandemic, with all the things that have been going on, uh, sometimes that's difficult, uh, even for myself. Um, and, and it's important that we take the time to do that. So that being said, uh, I'm thankful for you. Think about the things that you are thankful for. Spend some time uh, pondering that. Stay on top of this. Keep up good work. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye.